let's let's take it back a little bit. Justice sure thing. League came out 2017. Yep. 2017. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. Zack Snyder had a family tragedy where he had to step down from being the director of that movie. And jo- good old Josh Whedon came in. Everyone was excited. Josh Whedon handled the Avengers. So we was like, oh, yeah, he's going to definitely do the Justice League right. Then the Justice League came out. Not a lot of people were a fan of that movie. Not a lot. Did anyone rewatch Justice League? I, I did. have not. I I seen it once and I was like, you know what? I, I think I'm good. I've seen it twice, but in spur in spurts. Mm-hmm. So I seen it once all the way through, and I didn't hate it. But I was like, I never need to see this again. Like it just wasn't very good to me. I just and then I seen it, it again Wednesday. as it pops up on TV. You said you just recently watched it uh, Wednesday. I watched it on Wednesday because I watched all the movies leading up to the Snyder Cut, mm-hmm. so I get a better. I, I was really taking notes here because I was like, I don't want to come in here and just sprout this dumb praise stuff like that. Because you know, uh, I do tend to you know saying to go in DC's favor more because I'm a huge DC fan, right? As well, but I'm a huge comic book fan. And a lot of things I'm passionate about, I will take, you know, to the fence. And a lot of things that don't get the hate that it needs or it should be hate on a little bit more. That's the kind of size, you know, I, I'm going to uh, go with. So I, I watched on Wednesday the Josh, the, the Justice League, as we call it. And I was like, all right, I got it. In, I got it fresh in my mind. The Justice League. Yeah, I got it <laughs> fresh in my mind right now. So when I see the Snyder Cut, I can see what they took out. And yeah. Well, I've yeah. seen it once. I, I'm doing the same thing as the director. After the first time I seen it, I was like, I didn't hate it, but I don't think I need to see this again. Yeah, I didn't hate it like I hated BVS. Like, BVS made me physically upset. That, the movie was not that bad. I don't know why people hate that movie as much as they do. I think because it was such a layup. What do you really? But, okay. Because it's the big three. It's the Holy Trinity. Like, Having all three of them in a movie, all you have to do was just do it, and it would have been it's 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 just it's just a layup, like. Huh. But I feel like if they just do it, people would be upset. It was like, oh no, they just did it. You know what? It'd have been like if the first Avengers movie was bad, you'd be like, how? Like everyone is there, just do it, and that's exactly what the first Avenger movie did. There wasn't a, a, a grandiose plot. It wasn't like no one really talks about it anymore. Because it wasn't like the most, the, it wasn't everyone's favorite film. But you know what? It it did it, and it did it well enough that we kept the we kept the ship moving. You know what I mean? Because it's like you have everyone. How are you gonna mess this up? You got Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. You know, just if you would just made like a, just show up, and instead it was just like I don't know, like wow, well, they just did a bunch of awareness. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was just more out of frustration, you know what I mean? It's like a breakaway, and you like brick it on the dunk. Just lay it up. It's a layup. Just, just, just do it. Square the point, man. You don't lay up on the Trinity, bro. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say the same thing. I was like, that's you, a, know, you, know, you don't do on the Trinity. You don't, you don't do a three sixty dunk, and then, and then it hits the rim and flies out of balance. <laughs> That's what you don't do on a Trinity. And that's exactly what BVS did. It was no, that's, exactly, that that. that's exactly what Justice League did. It, yeah. No. Not, Justice yeah, League yeah. tried to bounce the ball, put it between the legs off the backboard, and missed I actually bad. Think if BVS wasn't received as bad as it was, it probably wouldn't make because Justice League was supposed to be like two movies to begin with. Right. Exactly. They, they probably wouldn't have been backpedaling as hard as they was. And then it just all went downhill after that. Like those, like the Flash movies and stuff started getting canceled. The Cyborg movies w- went went away. I mean, I really think BVS was the one that kind of it. Like it's like first of all, people were mad about Man of Steel, I, and then I, they I, took that same about, energy people, into BVS. People, I don't, and then BVS really shit the bed on on BVS. Once again, really bad. I, I don't. It, it's it, it's uh, it, it's almost a point of hate just to hate. But before we I get don't to think that, so that Martha uh, line was tough. Doomsday very tough. First of all, Lex Luthor extremely tough. I agree with you on all two and a half of them things because the Martha thing. I'm just like, oh my god. Okay, the, the Martha it's like, makes sense to me. 
it, it doesn't bother me as much as it bothers everybody else. I'm like, I don't get why everybody's so angry about that line. Because honestly, well, once again, when if you're gonna if you're gonna call people out for doing dumb shit, but you don't call out the pe- other people who do the same dumb shit in other movies, then what's the point? You may not have the exact Martha line, but I'm just like, but my God, you know, saying there's a, a lot of other things. That's why I, I like both of them. I'll call the stuff out that DC do wrong, but I'll call the stuff that Marvel do wrong. Mm-hmm. But it just, it always seems as nobody will ever call out Marvel when they do something. And then it's like, if, if I go back and say, bro, what did you really hate about BVS? What did you really hate about Man of Steel? And it can go back to the Zod breaking the neck. I'm like, are, that's, the, that's what pisses you off? Like that was and everybody, yeah. wants, everybody wants to say. I think I think that's what really pissed people off. Because you know what, that that kind of gave you a tone for how like Zack Snyder didn't understand the character. I thought it was. But I thought that how was did I understand well the character? Because, though? Yeah, it's like it showed him he was like struggling with that moment because like, Superman don't generally do. like. I guess modern Superman doesn't really kill people. Okay, he, and like, you know he'll what? go yeah. way out of his way before he kills someone. And then for and him you, to like kill that dude as violently as he did, when he could have just like flew in the air or something, look, you know what I mean? Like, like he he should have ended up in the, in like the negative zone. Like, no yeah. one wants to see Superman like snap a dude's neck in front of like children. But he, <laughs> so, but, no, 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 because don't nobody else care about that any other time. Don't, don't bring the kids in this. Nobody care about the kids. No, so, because it's Superman. He, uh, but here's the thing, but Superman okay, so snap next. The, the the Superman that 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 you just described that that people wanted, we got, and y'all didn't like the movie. So then what? People I mean, forgot that doesn't mean you changed Superman, Superman returns. You change the story that you tell. You could tell the same story of Man of Steel. All I'm saying though is just like him snapping the neck was not pivotal. To, to that character's development or growth and it was unnecessary to be in a movie. You could have done it another way. He could have blinded him or something. I don't know. He could have did something else. But Superman is just not notoriously known for, like, killing people. He just isn't. And I think when people saw that, it kind of gave them a taste for, like, Zack Snyder don't respect content. It kind of made people think about, oh, we're, we're, we're about to get X-Men. Because Brian Singer also didn't respect the characters. He just did what he wanted. And I think that's what people took into BVS. And then BVS was just, it was just wild, man. It was wild. It was real wild. Was the choices they made, wild. <laughs> it was just wild. as wild as Justice League <laughs> at all. Justice League BVS is only wilder terrible. because of the story behind it. You know what I mean? Like, if we would have got this movie instead, I think it probably would have been better. Like, the whole situation would have been better. I think no, every movie not, because, coming like down said, the line would have been better. People already, so, yeah. are, people was already set to hate. You you have to prove the people wrong before you can show them basically the light. Right. If we had gotten this movie and they said, you know what, screw it, we'll go ahead with the Snyder cut. Everybody now talk about some man. Why didn't we get this version? Because you would have hated it. Because oh, you was already I mean, trained to hate. I'll, I will definitely tell you why we did not get this version in the theaters for sure. I'm not sure if we if, if we're doing that right now or, or or if you want to wait, but I can I say just let, from let's wait for that. Let's wait for okay, that. yeah. Um, just from the business sense alone, like why this would never be in a theater. Well, it it, it would never been four hours in a theater. Yeah, but I I think I think the whole expectation to hate is right because we got BVS, people hated that, and then the ultimate edition literally added thirty minutes to it, and then everyone loved it. So people are already set to hate. I don't think everyone loved it. I think the people that rewatched it loved it. But the people who hated it, they're not going to rewatch it to love it. Like, 30 minutes doesn't really change what I didn't like about the movie. It changed a lot of people's opinion. Yeah, but it didn't change. Like, did it change Lex Luthor? No, Lex is bad. I'll give you that. Because Lex is one of my favorite DC villains. Mm -hmm. And I I couldn't stand him in that Ultimate Edition. Justice League, it don't matter. Jesse Eisenberg is not Lex Luthor to me, whether it's his son or not. There was a potential for him to be something cool, and it just didn't happen. I think the Cherry uh, Jolly Rancher really took it. God, bro, don't even think. (laughs) That was the part that really... Oh, okay. Um, It's just so weird. Just why why would you think that was a good choice? Like, did no one pull him to the side and be like, yo... Have you seen the dailies? This shit don't look good. <laughs> Tell him to do something else. It don't look good. It don't. 
But yes, a lot of people were very upset about Justice League. And once it was a lot, the cat got out of the bag that Josh Whedon changed a lot of stuff in this movie. So, which started the hash, um, hashtag release the Snyder Cut um, trend. And that's been going on for years. And people were starting to lose hope. And then Jason Momoa came out of nowhere. He said, I saw the Snyder Cut and it was fantastic. And then it started ramping up again. And then it started ramping up some more. And then rumors started circling around that the Snyder Cut is going to be released. People started talking about it, started ramping it up some more. And then finally, I think it was the uh, DC Fandom where we got the official announcement that uh, the Snyder Cut was going to come to HBO Max. Um, it was originally going to be a miniseries, but now it is a movie. So many people are excited about it, and we've been looking forward to, forward to this day for a while. And finally, it has released. So if you guys haven't already seen Mr. Uh, A&E's review on it, go check it out on the Nerdgasm, uh, gosh, the Nerd Coalition Studios channel to check out that um, review for it. And, uh, yeah, you, that'll be the full spoiler, uh, review where right here we are getting into spoilers. So, well, so yeah. that'll be my not spoiler review. I said it all wrong. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> I said it all wrong. Um, the non spoiler again. Yeah. The non spoiler review. And then we'll get the sport. This is the spoiler review. All right. <laughs> God, this is the spoiler review. You have been warned. So let's get to it now. Before we start off and get into the spoiler stuff, let's give our general reactions. Mr. Aini, I'm going to start with you. I love the movie. And I was the one, I put my remastered version of Justice League up um, to, uh, a couple days ago before the Snyder Cut came out. So I I made sure that I'm not backpedaling on anything I said uh, when it happened. So I, I actually enjoy you know say what i got and i was to be fair was more lenient because i wanted a justice league movie i'm we, at that time we was on the cusp of getting a third avengers movie and we had not one justice league movie right and i was on the case that hey josh we did the first two avengers movies you know why not do you know something for um you know justice league like that but Coming back and you know getting older and watching more of the movie, it didn't age well. I will say that Justice League 2017 did not age well. Mm-hmm. After seeing you know the Snyder Cut, I'm actually a little pissed off at Josh Whedon for a lot of things, and I'm also pissed off at Warner Brothers for a lot of things because you know Zack Snyder already got a hard time for the way he you know wants to make things different because that's what everybody's asking for. They want different, but then they, they really don't want different. Right. And now when that when they gave him when he gave something different, they shit on him. And then his daughter passed away, which made everything harder. So I understand stay away from the project, but to th- th- see this come to light, this is not it's cinema history. We haven't really seen nothing like this happen. Mm-hmm. Which actually opens the door for a lot of other things. So general reaction before we get into the full breakdown of everything, I love the film. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it's hella better than what we got in 2017. All right. Uh, the director, How? what was your general reaction to this movie? Um, I think this is a great movie. I um, I was talking to um, a friend of the network, Derek Darko, and hey. I was comparing... Yeah, hey, Darko. I was comparing it to the difference between um, getting a homemade burger on two pieces of white Wonder Bread Versus getting like a gourmet burger in a restaurant with like a Pilsner. It is, it's the same sandwich, but just way better. Mm -hmm. It's a way better movie. All right. Uh, My general reaction, I did enjoy this movie. Now, I did call it uh, Justice League with Grammarly when I uh, went online and started talking about it. Because it basically was. It was a lot of the same things, but minor tweaks to it. But those tweaks did make a difference. There is some things I did not agree with or something mm-hmm. or a lot of my opinions did not change from the first one. Uh good and bad, but we'll get to that when we talk about the um we'll get to that when we talk about the full movie. Um now, Mr. Andy, I'm not sure if you I don't recall if you said our rating scale. Uh what did you give the rating for this movie? I gave it a damn near perfect. Okay. Um damn near perfect. Now, the director, uh, I'm I'm not sure if you're familiar with our rating scale. An A, like an A-plus, is a complete nerdgasm. A-minus is a damn near perfect. 
A B is a B. We don't know what to call it yet, sadly. A C is a hashtag, give it a chance. A D is a catch it at the barbershop. And a F is a run me my refund. Oh, uh, this is definitely a B. It's a B movie. Okay. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. I, I would give it a strong B. I would give it a B as well. There's still minor things that I just did not like, but we'll, we'll start and get to that. But first, a lot of the characters got some excellent, excellent, excellent development. One of them being the Flash. Matter of fact, no, no, I'm sorry. One of them being Cyborg. Let's talk about him because he had the biggest development out of all of them. Um, so let's let's discuss him real quick, uh, Mister Andy. I'll start with you, and then we could just have start having an open discussion. With it. Yeah. Uh, of, of, when it comes to Cyborg, it's like uh, once again, like I, when you said they, they they did minor tweaks to it, they definitely did. This is an, an extra two hours added to the movie that we that, that we got in 2017. So there's a lot of major changes here, and, and looking at what they did with Ray Fisher is actually insulting. Mm-hmm. It really is because. You know, they gave this guy a whole backstory. They showed this guy going through the pain that he was going through. They they, they showed him and his family. They showed him trying to understand what his powers were. Like, we really did not understand. I mean, unless you read comic books, you really didn't understand the scope of what Cyborg can do in 2017. Mm-hmm. And now it's like. This man is the God's eye. They used to call it in Fast and Furious. I'm saying he is the World Wide Web, along with being like the Terminator. Brothers so it's pretty like, much. It, 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 exactly, yeah. So he can, he, he can, he. There's a lot of things that he can do, and he's powerful in his own sense. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the things when it came to, you know, him and um, Silas Stone, played by Joe Morton, which you know Joe Morton is underrated. Man, he's good at most everything he does. Yeah, I think he was a good choice to play his dad. And then I felt the emotion. It wasn't just, hey, Mother Box, save my son, blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, nah, man, because that, that whole speech of the father twice removed or when it comes to him saying, I will not let my son die. Like, I felt all that stuff because he's a good actor what he does. So uh, all those things, I like how when they show when like how Cyborg is working in his mind, and it's like, you know, you just see Ray Fisher as, you know, Victor Stone himself. Mm-hmm. Walking through, you know everything, all, all, all the you know the scenarios and everything. That I thought that was dope. And there was just some things that puzzled me to the point of like, damn, why do you keep some things in the movie? Because I, because uh, he had a very powerful line at the end, you know, when it came to splitting the mother boxes. But I, they cut a lot of things, and for the sake of putting in jokes, right? And I was like, see, that that's that's the things I don't like. Every movie don't have to be the Avengers. Everybody in the Avengers don't have to be Tony Stark. And that's where some uh, things are starting, you know, uh, some ways they're starting to go with, with some of those movies to the point where it it bothers me a little bit. And and don't and this 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 movie is not without comedy. I just think it's it's spread out better. Right, yeah. You know, it was definitely uh, uh, it, it, it was a lot of far in between. Yeah, a lot, yeah. So you know, it, it was like the whole thing about you know, yo man, I can't feel my toes, but I ain't even got toes. I think God need that, right? Yeah. You know, say I ain't laugh when he said it in in that movie. I ain't laugh when he said it in this. I mean, and I'm glad he, he took it out of this movie. But I just felt as though it's actually a shame, and I can understand why Ray Fisher was upset at WB because look, they cut out basically his movie. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I agree with Cyborg being a better character in this movie. However, I just did not care about his relationship with Dad. It, it did not really sell me on that. I feel like there should have been more development with him and his dad actually trying to re- reunite before the whole death of him. That should have definitely happened. Because it after, right before that, he, uh, I think in the beginning of the movie, he was just like you know pushing him aside. Then he became Cyborg. We didn't see him re and uh, like, you know, do anything with his dad until he got to um, he got the motherboard and went to go uh, revive Superman. And all they did was just look at each other. There wasn't really much of a conversation. Like, hey, I understand. Like, you know, it was without that apology that his dad deserved. But now, but I what, feel like was that, it, oh, was that? Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I feel like that kind of sold the death a little bit more, but I still didn't feel like he was like broken about it because Ray Fisher was still emotionless in this whole movie. 
Now that could be due to you know his mind being robotic and all that, but that that wasn't sold to me as well as I thought it was going to be sold to me in this movie. I'll let you know the, the director talk if I give my thought on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think I understand why Ray Fisher is mad. I don't. I, a lot of people they come at Ray Fisher, and I don't. I don't understand why so many people, you know, hate him. I just think I don't know. I feel like they're. I don't know if his his stories are true or not. I just know they that it's kind of wild that they cut so much. He based so much of his um, part out, and he was. And then again, when I knew what Warner Brothers was trying to do, I understood why they cut out a lot of his parts. Because if you were just telling the story, like they help with the character, but they really didn't sell the story as much as like the other scenes. So I get why they cut him out. But at the same time, good Lord, they cut out a lot. So I, I think that has to do with like a scripting thing. Um, I always and forever will always hate the design of Cyborg. I didn't. I, w- I didn't mind that, like the full face mask on full Iron Man. I thought I would hate it. I didn't. I didn't mind the, like the little arms that came out of his back. That was f- f- shit. Look weird, but you know I didn't hate it. I just hate his general design. He looks so incomplete. He looks like a naked Terminator, and I just think that that's so stupid because. In the comics, he looks like a regular dude, which is metal parts. So, like, it's kind of like, ah, oh, that's kind of stupid, you know? I, I can see what you mean by that. Um, I didn't, like, this design does look too thin to me and for my personal taste. But I, I wouldn't call that, like, I wouldn't, like, put that against the movie for it. I hold it against the movie, 100%. I, I mean, I, I definitely, I, at the end of the first Justice League, you see him evolve his body to look something similar to like, I mean, cause like, what was the point of Ray Fisher getting into shape? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they morphed his body into something a little bit more human. esque. do you remember that scene at the end of justice league when him and his dad, they like, they do the thing and his whole body changes. Do you know what scene I'm talking about? And in, in just, yeah, when he looks- I, I, I know. I think I, I see the movie. I know what you're talking about. I think that design just looked better it's like the difference between like the old transformers and how they just look like broken shards of glass punching each other mm. versus like when that newer transformer movie came out the bumblebee one like when they were fighting like those fight scenes looked amazing because you could really like everything was nice and smooth and you could see oh that dude just kicked that other dude in the face versus it just looked like mess mm-hmm. yeah let's see but also i it's like it's the first one. This is, you know, if he builds himself a better suit or a better look as the second one comes, I see that if they do Cyborg, Teen Titans, whatever, whatever case, you know, they want to go off of. But I, it, as it just starting out, I'll say it because, you know, say it like it's kind of like how I felt about, you know, the Amazing Spider-Man, the first one. Mm-hmm. And the swag was telling me, like, you know, he created that. And this is the first one. I was like, you know what? You are right. You can't be Spider-Man, Spider-Man at the first one if this is going to be kind of like an origin story. And this is this is a necessarily origin story. I mean, I understand, you know, looking a little weird and I hate the design, but I say it, but if it like it could it could get better as the story progresses, but you you got you gotta leave that thing to breathe. And to go back to, to what you were doing, Swag, uh talking about you didn't feel the things with his dad. I mean, I I can't say, you know, I agree to sit a hundred percent on that because a lot of things what Joe Morton does is like, you know, 85% communication is not verbal. Right. And that whole scene of him walking into star Labs with the mother box, you may not say nothing, but his look is looking like you, you don't need me anymore. Right. Yeah. I, I totally got that. I don't think that was just yeah. fleshed out as well as I thought it could be. It, I think yeah. I think that has to do a little bit with like Ray Fisher as an actor and how I think he was probably directed. Probably because like I said, he was very bland and I can't yeah, really go against that because he's more, he's mostly robot. What I will say too also is that because they cut so much of Cyborg's part, we did miss a lot of um, his father's acting, which is where the acting is. 
Right. Like if if those two are on scene and you're wondering who to look at, you look at the pops. The mm-hmm. pops is carrying the scene on his back like Jesus of Nazareth, mm-hmm. and and he's making it happen. And I feel like Ray Fisher is Ray Fisher is good, but I also feel like he was probably told to like emote less. Okay. And the, you know, like the really sell confusion and pain, like when his, you know, like when his dad finally does get like offed. Like even that scene, he still kind of like his response was still kind of broken robot-y right? Versus like a human response, you know? Because like when it happened, I mean, he got bodied so quickly, you know. It was but I mean, like, but dang. he did have a human response when he cried when his dad wasn't at his game in the car. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not. I'm talking about cyborg. I'm not talking about yeah. Vic. Like, huh. I th- I just think that when he was because he spends most of the time kind of being broody like i get it you're a robot dude now like i understand but like you know he just it kind of just came off like angsty versus you know it didn't have as many layers and i think because he was told not to give as many layers because you're a robot like Zack snyder really thought like he was like he's a terminator and i mean there's more to cyborg than a terminator um also i would not believe for one second that guy is in high school when I saw him in the high school hallway, I was like, "This, this Negro is." Huge. I thought it was because I thought it was in college. I thought that was college ball because he was is playing West Compton. It was, was that college? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, was it was college. College. Was college. college. Okay. I was about to say. I was like, "Yeah, is this a high school student?" No, that'd like, be crazy though, right? Like, he needs to be drug tested if so, because there's <laughs> no like, yeah. way. What kind of vitamins is he taking? <laughs> I was looking <laughs> at him on the bench. I was like, "There's no possible way in the world." Um, I did like that he had some hacking history, which I was kind of shocked they didn't really like delve. Di- uh, they didn't dive deep on um, with him, you know, changing the girls' grades in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, and I- I'm surprised they didn't really dive deep on it. Like that would have been cool if he was like in his mind and they had that scene in the film. He was like, "Oh wait, I remember I done this back in you know." I would like that little like that little nod would have been cool. I feel like a lot of a lot of uh, cyborg could have been fleshed out a tad bit more with like one or two lines, and it would have been like great for me. Um, on Mark's point about the body, I um, agree with Mister A and E on that. Like again, this is like the first movie, and then he also has to come to accept himself. So of course he's not going to have like some great modifications. So I think that was this is still part of a character, like the underlining things. That was part that of design is so ugly. We're never going to get another one. <laughs> we aren't. I don't see Ray Fisher in a WB future. I, I just don't. I disagree. Yo, with he, that. he, yo, he. They say you can't work for us anymore. Well, they say yeah, that but then, but but yeah, WB, that's pretty big. Yeah, but WB responds to paper. Yeah, they do. Like like you said, WB uh, reacts. Don't listen. I don't know. Reacts. Like it'd be different if Ray Fisher was acting different. I think they'll just. I think they'll just replace him with like Blue Beetle or something, and they're going to make Blue Beetle like the same type of like character. Like he has something on him that he doesn't understand. That's Iron Man like, and you know that's sometimes not it be attacks a good look people. At WB, that's not going to be a good look, and they're not going to. It's about come what's Peter. Yo, Ray Fisher is done with the WB. Like he's not going to be in any more future movies. Like I don't know if you've been following his situation at all, but I've he was like until it, it, um, the dude steps down. He's like, I'll never be in a WB movie again. Look, paper talk different to people. And I, it just, will. I just Let's, don't see them doing that. <laughs> I, I see them just writing him completely. Because he already had a movie, lost it. And then his next appearance was going to be in The Flash. He's not going to be in The Flash anymore. They're going to replace that with Supergirl or something. Like, I don't, I, I think it's pretty quiet for Ray Fisher. Unless, unless things change. It's possible, but I think the way he's been change. acting, I don't think so. Look, I think a lot I really of think this. this movie. Yeah, but this movie opened the door to a lot, mm-hmm. and, we, and first of all, the, you know, the only reason why we got this movie is about is because how much the fans fought for it. Mm-hmm. This was, I, I this, think this, the only reason we got this movie is because of COVID. No, if COVID wouldn't have happened and the streaming wars ha- wasn't ha- wouldn't be accelerated, we would definitely not be getting this movie. If they didn't but, like Batman v Superman, why would they put this out to fight a streaming war with Netflix and Disney Plus? This is not the because movie it has a for. because it has a built in. So this is it's for the same exact reason that they put their whole movie catalog 
onto HBO Max. They're trying to get HBO Max to be on the same level as Disney Plus and Netflix. And it's not. And they're WB, which means that they're AT and T. What come like 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 telecom? At the end of the day, they're just here to make money. You so, know W. You know WB accepted the Snyder Cut before COVID hit, right? They were not. Yo, I'm trying to tell you, like they 100%. They, ex- they accepted the movie and, t- and said that they were they were they uh, were in negotiations. And originally, what they wanted Zack Snyder to do was to release his version, which was not finished. Like the VFX and stuff wasn't done. So, yeah, it was a movie, and if you show people, you can get them to understand it, but it wasn't like what it was. They ended up dumping another $60 million into it because, like I said last time when we were talking about it, is it's Netflix is putting out movie theater-style movies on their platform, and they're not charging people for it, and they're Netflix. And because of the streaming wars, WB wants to be in it. That's why we're getting Godzilla you know, in like a week, and we got Judas and the Black Messiah like two weeks before. Like I, the just like it had a built-in fan base. People were going to check it out. It's four hours of content. Originally, they wanted it to be a TV series, which meant if people signed up for it, they were going to be in for at least a month, maybe two, if you got them in the middle of the month. Yeah, that's how you get. That's how you hook hook line and sink of the people. It's so, business. I'm about saying, but it, it's a, to I'm say pretty, all that's on COVID is kind of asinine. No, I, it's 100 percent on COVID. I don't. I I definitely don't think. It would have been. It, it would have came out the way that we seen it. You're right. It would have so. came out. It yeah. would have probably been an hour shorter, and it probably would have hit the movie theater. Right. If it was, I don't COVID. think it would have hit the movie theater either. I just. I think it would have been something that they probably would have, especially with this whole, like the way the whole Ray Fisher thing popped off. If it still would have popped off, I think they. I think they probably would have just been like, I don't, I don't think they would have, but because they needed content. And the movie theaters were shutting down. They were like, we can throw this on our streaming service and hit. Out of all the content they have, they don't need the Snyder Cut right now. They don't need the Snyder Cut, but it's already it was already done. It was already there. I'm about to say and, this it, and it finally gave them that thing that they've been looking for. No one has been talking about anything trending realistically on HBO Max on like the massive scale. And now because of the Snyder Cut, this thing is hitting on HBO Max, which is like definitely boistering its reputation. I don't think we would have got this movie if it wasn't for, I I firmly believe that 100% wholeheartedly, if it wasn't for COVID, I don't think we would have got it the way that we got it. It definitely wouldn't have dumped 60, 70 million back into it. That's a tax write off, but still. I, I personally disagree with that, but I think we can all agree that Flash definitely got better treatment in this movie. Uh, I'm going to start with the director on how you felt about The Flash. I understand why that scene was cut. It was a cool scene. It was a cool scene. I get why it was cut. The Flash ran a little bit better, but he still runs weird. It was still weird running. Like That was still a choice. Um, I think overall, he, he was a better character for sure. He was less goofy. They took out that whole weird scene where he falls on Wonder Woman's boobs, I appreciated that. Yeah, like they made him like less, like less of a bitch, which I think is good. And we actually got to see like the full strength of his, like of his, uh, of his power, like what he could do, right. like how he was able to heal himself and reverse time. And you know, I really appreciated what they did. I... Hello. Yeah. Did he disappear? He went on mute real quick. Oh, okay. uh, uh, all right. Yeah, that, that was strange. Um, how did you feel about the Flash? Well, I'm saying, well, until we get the director back yeah. online. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Here I am. oh, okay. Oh, there you go. Good. Yeah. Can you hear Are you me? Cursing? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, no. I was. I don't know. My cord came out of my laptop. That oh, I was. No. Yeah, it was. It's like it was like the mic cord. But um, yeah. I just think um. I don't know, and and again, like they're moving forward. What are they going to do with the next like flashpoint supposed to happen? Um, Azure Miller is still kind of in hot water because of you know his whole scenario that he has going on, and also like they're not he's not the same star that he was when they first signed him because those Harry Potter movies haven't been moving like they should. He hasn't really been in anything. I don't know, man. I as I really hope that this Snyder Cut changes things, but I feel like it sets us up for a future that's way harder 
to push forward than it was to get the Snyder Cut finished. Mm-hmm. I, I I agree and disagree with you at the same time. And mm-hmm. one thing I do agree with that I think they did better with Flash in this movie. However, that whole save hour scene that I need to be in the movie. It was it right. Said it needed to be. It didn't need to be. Yeah, I didn't think that needed to be there. Oh, and I didn't think it needed to be in the movie either. I was like, why? Yeah, I thought it was a it cool was no scene, point. but yeah. I saw why they cut it. I mean, I know why they cut it. I know that that's a deleted scene only. Yeah, yeah, exactly, if you, right. when, you get the, when you get the Blu-ray, that's a deleted scene only because it did nothing for the plot. It did nothing for the movie. I mean, it, it showed more lightheartedness of him trying to get a job, but I didn't care. I, I I'm kind of upset that the whole Sesame Street got a slow mo, and I think that's that's slow mo overused. Oh, in my personal I, opinion. I meant to uh, say that during my general reactions. Like, this movie could have been three hours long if you took the slow mos out. Easy three hours. Yeah, I'm <laughs> saying that. The slow mos out. There was, there was an overuse of slow motion in this even thing you, that, that was not needed. Even if you kept some of the slow mo in. And I think also it's kind of a problem when you use slow mo for style, mm-hmm. but then you also use it as a, a, a hero's power. Like I the Flash's yeah. power was slow mo, so it was kind of, it was kind of the confusing. It wasn't confusing. It was just kind of just like, I don't know, because at, at certain moments when I would see slow mo with Wonder Woman, I was like, oh, she's moving really fast. But sometimes I just think it was slow mo. Right. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Like if they did like um what they did with Quicksilver with the Fox movies, like none of that movie had slow motion until you saw Quicksilver, and that highlighted it great. So I can yeah. understand a bit confusion. It was that one football scene with Vic. I was like, there was three parts of slow motion within two seconds, and it didn't. Yeah, happen. even in that Wonder Woman scene, there's two slow scenes of slow motion of her dodging bullets, mm-hmm. and I'm like, we got it the first time, right? Like, like we I, don't I, need I it okay. again. Like I like the part where she like dashed through the crowd, uh, blocking the bullets. It looked better in fast motion than it did in slow motion. Yeah. I, I I said so. I, y- y'all have no disagreement on me on that one. Back to the Flash though. Uh, Ezra Miller makes those different kind of style choices, and I don't necessarily agree with his style choices a lot of times. Mm-hmm. But like, especially when it comes to, like the running, because in interviews that that's an Ezra Miller thing, and I'm like I don't agree with the run <laughs> he does. There's like I said, certain style choices of and I, I call Matthew Broderick faces that he makes <laughs> that I just don't necessarily agree with. Uh, but there, but when it comes to once again, the Flash is a hero in the Snyder Cut, whereas like I agree with the director that he was a bitch in in um, Justice League, and I was like, and he was there to crack jokes for the sake of cracking jokes, and I was like, I'm glad they took that whole brunch thing out, mm-hmm. and I was just like, God, that that was cringe to watch, even watching it back on Wednesday. That was a cringe to watch. So now, him, uh, like Joshua made the comment when Flash is saving all the people from the debris that's falling, mm-hmm. he, he he said out his mouth that he felt as though the audience wouldn't get it. That insults my intelligence. Right, yeah. Now, I thought that part was great. That was one of my favorite parts. I was like, why didn't we add that in? Yeah, uh, that but, showed but, like, but, Flash being cool. But even even when it comes to him tipping the mother box, yeah, you know, he misses his window. And even in the, in the t- 2017 Justice League, we get the picture of Pa Kent falling in the water. If you're if you're in movies, if you're going to show something like that, there has to be a reason behind it. Right. There had no reason behind it. But now that was in a soundtrack to show him reversing time. Right. To get that mother box out to the point where he needed to touch it because he missed his window. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that helps illustrate. The power, and he took it seriously. And even when it came to, uh, to the end, where they lost, and he had to go back, and was like, "Yo, let me, uh, you know, go back and, and and reverse this so I can meet my window." I thought I was like, "Yo, he's a huge part of the movie," and all they did was, you know, relegate him to jokes and saving a family that did not matter. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, I'm not saying you know. People's lives don't matter, stuff like that. I'm just saying, but that that whole scene was just added in there to be Marvel like, and I was like, it don't need to be that. That that Russia family pissed me off in 2017 because it was not near. Like, really, did they the only family tried to decide this house? Right. And, and and to the point where, look, Flash, I get it. You know, saying he is a joke, stuff like that. But he, in this is the first one, so he he's just getting his door at being, you know, working for, you know, um. 
CSI or you know, or, you know the, the, the intelligence unit, but uh, he ain't dumb. Like Batman should have to tell you how to use your powers. Exactly right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that's just that's just insultful to the character of Flash in a way. So I I appreciate what you know uh, he did basically in in, in the Snyder cut. See that that's why I can't necessarily fully agree saying that Zach don't care about the characters when Josh Wheaton clearly showed that he don't neither mm-hmm. when all this stuff was in Snyder's movie. Now, uh with me when it comes to the Flash, I liked him. I mean, no, I'm sorry. I didn't like him until like the three hour mark. That one scene where he hit the debris, I thought that was genius. Because again, that showed him trying to be a true hero, and just like when Bruce Wayne said before that, it was like, "Yo, you be a hero, just save people," and it really showed him stepping up to save people. I thought that was a great moment that they should have added in the original cut. Um, they also uh, like display his uh, powers a lot better in this movie. With him, uh, you know, like you said, with the, him running back in time. I'm not sure if y'all noticed, but he phased through the explosion. He like shifted his monocles so he would like dodge the explosion and then he ran Mm. back in time. I thought Mm -hmm. it was like that was subtle, but that was that was a great display. And you throughout the movie, I thought he had a better origin story than Cyborg did because it showed his growth and how dramatically he grew. With that being said, I mean I can't agree with you on that one at all. What growth did he go through? Like he was nothing in the beginning until like and then he really wasn't uh, like a huge part of what happened at the end of the movie. Like you said, like Mr. Andy said, he was an important piece to this, to helping. Oh, do you mean like his growth between the two movies? The two movies. Because he was kind of the same character at the beginning of the movie that he was at the end of the movie. He was just more into his hero mode because he was trying. He was a hero before we met him. Was it like he was still unsure of his himself before that? I don't think he was unsure of himself because he was out there. He had the suit. He saved Iris. He was like going to school to save his dad. He was doing all things. I don't think he was. He didn't have the community. Like he didn't have like the people to like really work with. But when he showed up on the scene, it wasn't like the first Justice League movie where he was kind of bumbling and didn't know what, what to do. For the most part, he was just like, "I'm gonna do this, mm-hmm. and I can do this, and I can hold that." And yeah, I can do this. I can, I can, I can, I, I can zap it. Like he, he was very, very competent. Like the whole entire time. I think, uh, Swag, where you're getting at is because because his reactions were different than than Vic's were. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it could, it could be more of a develop because you, you can read his personality. Yeah. It could be that. It really could be that. That um, because, like I said, because Vic was angry. He, he was angry through the whole movie. It was like, yeah, at one point, was angsty. I, yeah, I was, I, at one point, I need you to be like, I ain't say you had to say booyah, I'd be smiling, like you know what I'm saying, but I'm saying that you, you, you kind of got a shot. I mean, he did give Flash a little fist pump at the end, right? But I'm saying, but it's just, it's just like the stone cold all the way, and I'm like, okay, but I think with Ezra Miller and Barry Allen showing the different personality of him embracing being a hero, him being on the team, stuff like that, the personality helps. Sway that opinion. So I'm not saying I agree or disagree with it, mm-hmm. but uh, right. I can understand where you're coming from. And adding to that, I don't think Ezra Miller is a bad actor, but I can't really get into him being Flash. It is tough. It, it's like very I actually have to like to get into him being Flash. Maybe because this is not a Flash I'm used to seeing. This is a different portrayal of him. But it's just like I don't think the Flash is. It, he he's. I don't even. I don't even like, think it's that. I literally think he looks nothing like what you think a Flash will look like. Yeah, and he doesn't really act like a Flash. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like what a it's lot of tough. people said about Tom Holland Spider Man is what I get a lot from him. Look, I can see how people feel that way about Tom Holland Spider Man. Oh, no, no, I don't yeah, agree Holland, with it. Tom Holland's great. I just like I, yeah. I, a lot of people give him flag. It's like he's a very annoying kid. This is what I got from the Flash watching this movie. I think if I was to know Ultimate Spider Man, I would appreciate Tom Holland Spider Man even more. And we all know the MCU leans more that way. Mm-hmm. But like I just think because there was just so many adult Spider Men to seeing this seeing this kid. But I think with like with with Ezra Miller. He, I really like him as an actor personally. Like, I like, um, was it the um, 
perks of being room a for a wallflower. Or, yeah, yeah they like those were like great films. Yeah, there's, yeah, he's I, not a bad I, actor. I don't know who told him. Like, I really feel like it's down to direction and intention. And I just think I don't know. Like, it just seems like all the choices made for characters were kind of just like everyone was playing make believe, and they were just like, you know what? I'm going to talk with an accent, and they were like, why? And they're like, because I want to. Like. The same problem I have with him is the same problem I have with Lex Luthor, where I feel like you miscast and you have to sell me on the performance. But they went so hard on the performance that they overshot it. And now I'm just like, not only did you miscast, but you like misdiagnosed the character. This looks comp- so now it looks double bad. You know, not only is you late, but, you know, you also broke. You don't got no money. So. I think that that's the toughness of it. Like if he looked the way he was and he was Azure Miller, then they should have like presented him differently. Mm -hmm. Like there's a way to make him funny. I don't know. He just seems like a very, he seems like a person who thinks they're funny versus the flash who is like a funny person. Yeah. I get that. That's exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it for me. Uh, I feel like Mr. Andy had a reaction to what we said or a response. I'm not sure if you No, no, I agree. Okay. Uh, next up, Aquaman. I did not care about Aquaman in this movie in particular. <laughs> I feel like they did nothing more to him. You'll probably point it out, Mr. Andy, but I feel like I was like, oh, like I feel like he's the same exact character in this movie. Except they took that one joke away with him sitting on the lasso, which I was very happy they did because that joke was definitely unnecessary and unneeded. Um, the one part I did like with Aquaman that I kind of wish this movie had more of was just him talking to the Flash. Just those little team moments. I thought that was great. And I kind of wish we got more. The hat thing had me going. I like the hat thing. The, yeah, the hat yeah. thing was okay, actually pretty yeah, good. I forgot about that. You know, yeah, that was funny. You know what's sad, though? So, they are, like, before this movie came out, before any one of them came out, they're supposed to be, like, the Flash and Cyborg are supposed to be, like, buddies. Right, yeah. And I really I feel that. like Flash and Aquaman were given a buddy vibes that I wish Flash and Cyborg was giving me, yeah, but because, they weren't. Yeah. Flash, um, Cyborg was supposed to be like a buddy team Flash movie. Yeah, and I think like at the grave scene when they were digging him up, it was just kind of like they were trying. Mm-hmm. But again, I just think because whoever directed him, or maybe it was his own choice, I don't know how it went. I don't know if these actors were like, I'm going to do this, and the director said, go for it. Or if they were like, what should I do? And he told them to do that. Mm -hmm. But I think they just was like, yo, be friendly, but also be completely empty. And then so he was just like, you know, she's 5,000 years old. And he was like, oh, the girls, nice. You know what I mean? It was just like, you could have just delivered that a little bit more, better. The best way. Like Aquaman did. Aquaman's simple little line. Let me see number one again. That shit hit. Like, right. I giggled. I was like... <laughs> the facial express, well, well, it also dealt with emotion, like Mr. a said. <laughs> His facial expression sold that. Yeah. Or, 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 or it's kind of like when like when the Flash was running to Superman, Superman sidesteps him, and then he just, all of a sudden, he just points at him, he's like, yo, I'm so sorry. Right, yeah, because, exactly. Like, that, that, that was great. Little, I don't know, again, I don't know if it's a Ray Fisher thing or a director thing, mm-hmm. but I just think he, he just came off so metallic yeah look if and i I, get it if i were to do it i would have had like you know cyborg has you know he's been this for a while he doesn't really know how to be human again whereas flash is enjoying life and he could try to humanize him back to where he was that i would have liked that dynamic but it's like y'all kind of missed the mark on that i mean yeah it's cool but 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 what would they add it with um with aquaman here is just that you know I'm glad that they that they they took the whole kind of rebel thing out that, that he was in the movie because you know I mean, Aquaman don't know how to be king of Atlantis. He ain't ready. He ain't ready for that yet. He don't like the Atlanteans. He said that right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know he, he doesn't like that. He just wants to do do his shit on Earth, but you know at the same time respect the sea. And that's the that's the vibe that he gave off. But he he has that that the more subtle comedy and the more things between him. In the Flash, I enjoyed those. We didn't get those in another movie, so it's like okay, good follow up. And then obviously we're gonna play off to when when the Aquaman movie came out. But you know all that stuff I enjoyed, mm-hmm. and I felt as though like I said, I'm not saying it's a big overhaul of who Jason Momoa's Aquaman was, but I'm saying but 
those little things that they added or or excuse me that they that they, that they took out of the Justice League movie. I was like, how do y'all not think the sidestep? was funny or the or, or the whole hat joke wasn't funny but yet him telling the truth on his lasso or him you know his heart being erratic i'm like hold on why is aquaman scared right like y'all aquaman has been known as a joke since the super friends but I, oh since the comics came out but i'm like yo y'all especially when they started redoing him in the 90s i'm like y'all gotta put some respect to aquaman for a little bit like this man ain't just his power ain't just talking to fish the man is a badass in himself right exactly you know, and then dumb, dumb hit his irregular heartbeat or being fast as Superman is there. I was like, no, he ain't flinch when in, in the starter cut. He ain't flinch. He like, all right, yo, we got a job to do. First of all, it was a bad idea, but you know what? Let, let's do it anyway. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And once again, yeah, I, I just think all that stuff. I don't like superhero movies that are trying to be funny for the sake of being funny, mm-hmm. because that's the whole. Marvel formula. That's the formula that every superhero movie is trying to take. And I'm like, you don't. It don't work for everybody. Mm-hmm. You can't mm-hmm. do it with everybody. You're not gonna have the right director to do it with everybody, especially if they're not in a comedy like that. And look, they they make these jokes. Well, why they gotta be so dark? I'm like, well, sometimes everything ain't gotta be like. I don't need everybody being Tony Stark in the Avengers neither. Right. You know so. That that's why I just part of Aquaman. It's, it's not really much to like, you know, sink into without just you know being redundant. But yeah. those little things I like better in the side of when it came to Aquaman. I do too, because it it kind of makes me like him more in Aquaman. Because in Aquaman he was yeah. he was fun. He was very fun in Aquaman, mm-hmm. and I did not get that like out of the lasso thing, which was like, why did y'all do that? Um, but when when we got that scene, I was like, you know what? The, this makes me feel like this makes me appreciate him and Aquaman a little bit more because it's it seems like the directors were communicating with each other at least like this is how I made them if you could translate that into your movie um, shit I don't think Josh Wheaton calls Zack Snyder out one time <laughs> um, <laughs> next Steppenwolf one of the biggest changes in this movie um, I'll start with Mr. a and on this well I, I said in my review I said uh I liked them better. It still reminded me of like the Sentinels from Days of Future Past meets Shredder from Ninja Turtle 2014. <laughs> and just mixed mixed in as like Steppenwolf. His suit was but, kind of corny. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I, was like, I was like, I was right. like oh, okay. I'm like, you know, but uh what I did like is the backstory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did absolutely. like yes, absolutely. you know, I, I did like he had a motive. Mm-hmm. And once again, I think Thanos got everybody spoiled. And everybody was like, you know what? Now I like how Marvel got a villain that you can relate to to the point you're like, damn, I really, he's really a bad guy, but I kind of get where he's coming from. I'm like, y'all need to slow down. Marvel did that what? Twice? Yeah. All right. Because uh, from the beginning of, of the 10 years, their villains suck. So I don't even want to hear that shit. Mm-hmm. However, uh, over in DC, I'm just like, look. It's a big bad, okay. Obviously, everybody's not going to be, you know, in depth of like what Dan's is doing, but the, but I got what he was trying to do. The man just wanted his place back with Darkseid. Right. He wanted he wanted his seat back on the throne, and this man was in debt fifty thousand worlds. I'm just like, bro, he just want you know. It's like he's doing all this. He just want to come back. He just want to be accepted. Right. And I'm like, okay, it don't need to be any more deeper than that. Mm-hmm. It's like I said, it's the separate wolf. They made him like a good first villain for the Justice League. And I was like, you know, I like it because he was stronger in this one. And that whole Amazon scene, I loved way more. Yeah, I, I, I still I still enjoy that. A lot of the things that I enjoyed in the uh, regular, I still enjoy in this. But here's the thing. I, I was just like, okay, it's more fleshed out. I did not know all them Amazon sacrificed themselves in, in, the, in the original one because they didn't show that. Mm-hmm. And because I was like, damn, that has more meaning because now he still got the mother box and it's like they almost they kind of died in vain, right? And it's it's like that that brings more pain 
to you know uh, the Amazons to Wonder Woman and, and that, 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 that whole part of the scene, and like this man just sitting there just chucking horses. I'm just like, whoa. Okay, I I'm not I, I'm wrong for this. Peter gonna come after me, but I was cracking up. Rolling <laughs> those horses, I was like, this he guy was is insane. <laughs> I'm about to he was sitting there just nah, they, 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 they <laughs> tossing them jaws like out my oh, way, like grabbing them from the backside and just launching them. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know, I, I, I enjoyed that the whole thing with you know with the Lancers was was done better. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was like, you know, cause um I, I was in the saying like, yo, Mira can do a lot. Why don't they show that? And Zack Snyder showed Mira being able to suck the moisture from the body of somebody. Exactly. Why did they skip that? We don't like Josh yeah, he made some poor choices. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's like to, to, to the point where it's like if somebody makes a choice to cut that out of the movie, mm-hmm. to in my personal opinion, that is somebody who don't understand the character mm-hmm. of which of what these people of what these people can do. And I'm like, you know, it it it, it just bothered me. That was like all this stuff that they did in Atlantis. This was actually a a, a very good battle. Like it wasn't easy to get that you know that mother box at first. Right. He got it. You know what I'm saying, but to, to the point where you're going, you're going you to get some battle scars. Try to get it from the Amazons and try to get it from the Atlanteans. To to the point where I was just like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. In 2017, he got that shit easy, yeah, and was I was like, blow. well, I'm about to say, well, they were no threat, and I'm like, hold on, these are the ones that was fighting in that great war. The Amazon, uh, uh, th- this little Steppenwolf came and just took y'all shit. Like there, there was no fighting. The Snyder Cut show all that fight in him and. And how actually intimidating he was. He didn't back down from nothing. He wasn't sitting there preaching to mother, 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 and all that stuff from uh, the 2017 right. version. And um, I was just like, okay, you know, you know, he got some depth behind him. So I was cool with him. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. Pretty much frame for frame, exactly what you said. I said this in the original, um, our uh, original review. I like that the Justice League had a definitive fight with him because. At the time where we had the two Avengers movies, they were just fighting an army of clones of the main villain instead of just mm-hmm. fighting the main villain. So I was really appreciative of that. And this brought it more. This brought it more. I like that he still like they he still had a couple hits on him, but he was still trying to fight for it. I like the I like fights where it's not one sided. Yeah, I agree. Uh yeah. Uh the mm-hmm. director- Yeah, um just to hit back on Aquaman right, right quick. The one thing that I'm glad got changed was how the Atlanteans spoke to one another. That was the way Zack Snyder did it was super goofy. And like needing to create air bubbles to talk underwater, I'm glad like that part was changed in Aquaman because if the whole movie was like that, which I was fearing um, for Aquaman at first, I don't think it would have been nearly as as like enjoyable to watch. I agree on that. Um, I agree on that. So I'm, I'm yeah. glad that part got changed up. And I, with James Wan did with Aquaman was superb. Um, with this one, Yo, know, Stephen Wolf looks better and worse at the same time. Like he like the the character looks so much better in this one, but again his outfit is is over designed. Yeah, he and it, like it has Stephen like the man. same not only was it that, but they were like constantly moving and it was just kind of distracting and it was just like really gold and kind of just I don't know. Like at like the way there was like this one part and I can't unsee it. It was just like he just had like this giant muscle butt, but it was like the gold was just like, chick, 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 chick. and it was all like it was just tight, and I was just like, "Good lord, this is just weird." Like, just redesign him better. I think the old Stephen Wolf outfit on the new Stephen Wolf design would have been like the ideal choice, but he was in like this weird. Just agree with that one. Um, I'm sorry, that old Stephen Wolf, that that, that whole 2017 Stephen Wolf was terrible. I'm talking about his clothes. Put his clothes, his armor, on this dude's body. Yes, I didn't, I didn't because, because I like that, that armor. gold armor. That is armor, atrocious. set armor sucks. Hey man, you can do what you want. I'm just letting you know that gold, that gold armor that was constantly moving around, that looked like shit. It was just bad. However, this Steppenwolf looked a million times better. His motivations was better. He actually looked more formidable. Like as far as like fighting. He kind of looked like he would kind of give it to you until someone shows up. I mean that like that was crazy, but um, <laughs> yeah. The, my only complaint with him is like he looked better than he did in BVS. 
Because I, I think that was him at, at BVS. He looked oh, real strange at BVS. Yeah, he was yeah. Uh, the... Uh, yeah, I forgot what... He looked bad. Um, and I think he looked bad in um, Justice League. And here, I think he looked good. I just don't like his outfit. I disagree on that. Um, I hmm. thought the outfit... He looked way better than he did in the original. Like yeah, I he say, looked 100% better. It's like his outfit the shirt meets, meets, meets the Sentinel. Because that's how the you know the, the Sentinel uh you know stuff was forming in the beginning of Days of Future Past. Right. Yo, even if yeah. it was like the Sentinel and it was just kind of if it just didn't move, I guess, or if it wasn't just spiky everywhere, but not it didn't look intimidatingly spiky, it looked like ruffles. Like it just looked complicated. And I know as like a renderer, it was just like this this sucks and it's reflective. There's fucking mad did ray you, tracing going on. This blows. Did it's you like it, something else. Did you like the the destroyer from Thor? Yo, if it looked like the destroyer from Thor, I would allow that. Like even that looked better than like it, it, this. It almost was the same thing. It really almost. Was. I mean, almost a hot dog is almost a hamburger. It's a no, meat it, and it's bread. No, it's a it's a <laughs> a, a it's hot almost dog is almost a sausage, it's almost, not a hamburger. Yeah, I would have said no. Sausage. It is almost. It's a meat and a bread. It's a meat and a bread. If you want to get, get, get on that comparison, then sure. Yeah, it was almost the same thing. You know, uh, almost. Not, but it was definitely his suit constantly moved. It was like, it was like carnage. I just, it was just, I just didn't like it. And it was just that yeah, the gold, very, very, very strange choice. Uh, one thing I gotta say about Steppenwolf, they made me care for him to the point where it's like, I hope he gets a seat. <laughs> I, I was seat? like, I hope he gets a seat on the throne because he it, it was like they were just shitting on him completely. Oh, yeah, I, I you know like, what? Bro, I hope he gets it. <laughs> I looked. I just looked up Stephen Stephen Wolf in the first one, mm-hmm. and Stephen Wolf in the second one. I really. I, I want to put this in the chat. I just really think if he had this armor, it would probably would have been a better move. Okay. Because his armor just looks at least at least at this point it looks like mm-hmm. it looks like armor versus this thing that looks like. He's I don't know, he looks alien. like a he looks like a he looks like a prickly pear. He's not. He's not from. Yes, Earth. he looks like a prickly pear. That's what it is. A yeah. fucking prickly pear like that shit. You nigga are, stuck you to are really on the steps of Dial Sim right now, I, but you're not there yet. But you're reaching. I okay. Think the worst he looked in this movie is when he took the first head, like the top half of his armor off, and we saw his like neck and his collarbone and all. And I was like, this yeah, is like Predator. And I was like, this is disgusting. Put it back on. Put, <laughs> like Predator, put your mask back on, bro. <laughs> um, this suit was ridiculous. Next, Wonder Woman. I'm gonna start with uh, the director on Wonder Woman. Man, I got to say, uh, she didn't have a lot to do in this movie, but when she showed up, she showed up real hard. She looked real powerful. She looked real strong. You know what? She looked like the opposite of what she looked like in Wonder Woman 1984, which is good. The way Zack Snyder treats Wonder Woman and how he makes her move, like that bank scene where you saw how fast she was. And how brutal she was. And how she just was like... I was watching this thing on YouTube where they put the two of them side by side. And like Josh Whedon just did stuff that I just don't like. I gotta <laughs> Y'all can send me the link to that. I do want to see that. Yeah, oh, I'll, yeah I'll, no, I'll, I'll send it to you. But it was just like how strong she was. And how fast she was. But also how she could move fast and be gentle. Like she would be blocking bullets... And she couldn't get to a bullet, so she moved a girl out of the I way. Love that. I love that. But she movie didn't movie. like throw her through a wall. It was just like a, whew. right? You know, I mean, the one thing I don't appreciate is her using her handcuffs to blow a man to smithereens, oh, like I in the same room that. with the children. To, I was going. That seems. That. I think if they would have just had the windows shatter and maybe he flew out, that would have been cool. But like the explosion, because I'm the, now I'm thinking, okay, he was what six feet away from them kids Mm -hmm. and the way that thing exploded that room is gone where them kids at i was going to say i was like there was no need to do all that (laughs) but all right everything up to that point i was like (laughs) yes i rewinded that shit the fucking wonder woman theme song always hit Mm -hmm. um 
I like that they they like took away like that goofiness, that weird male gaze. I thought that was a Snyder thing because I saw um, Sucker Punch, but apparently yeah. that was a Josh Wheaton thing because Josh Wheaton's pretty creepy. So it's like, oh man, it kind of made me wish that if we get One Woman three, if they could just bring Zack Snyder back for some action scenes. I know it would never happen, but man, I would really love that because even when she was fighting Stephen Wolf, like she was no slouch, man. Like they really brought that. I like that kick that they gave her. I, I really, really liked it. I like the war warrior one because you need to be a warrior when it's warrior time. Mm-hmm. You know, they killed all. He killed all your sisters. Yeah, I, and well, not I, all of them, but he killed a lot of them. I'm. I don't remember if they did that in the original Justice League movie, but Stephen Wolf taunting her. About nah, I don't think they did. That. They definitely didn't do that. And I like that. And it was like you saw her trying to, like, be. How can I put it? You saw her trying to be like she wasn't trying to get angry, but she was like, I need to channel this anger into my fight. Yeah, I also think this is probably some of the better Wonder Woman acting, and I'm not sure why that is. You would think, you know. Eight night one woman eighty four would have been better acted, but I really think she 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 what she had to do here she did it very well. I guess she didn't have a lot to do, but with the stuff she had to do she did extremely well. Yeah, I still think she was she's my favorite member of this team in this movie. I mean, she's definitely the prettiest. Oh, without a doubt. Um, but anytime <laughs> she was on screen, I just loved her. I absolutely loved her. She's uh, it. She's. Ah, uh, the she's fast and so strong. She's on one. She's on Superman's level, but not quite. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just so. And cool I to really, see someone, I really think that. It, it, like, like you said, the action. Her action scenes were very fluent. I would love to see Zack Snyder f- f- have a flying fight scene. I would love to see Zack Snyder's version of Cheetah versus Wonder Woman mm-hmm. at 1984. I would love to see that. I would pay hard earned money. I will pay a full movie ticket. I'll pay that bitch ass thirty dollar like quick release whatever vibe thing they like they do just to see that one scene. I'll pay thirty dollars to see that one scene of Zack Snyder, Cheetah, Wonder Woman. That, that shit gonna, would be phenomenal. That scene is going to be eighty minutes long because you know he loves the slow motion button. So I don't care. Give me that slow motion on that cat fur. <laughs> Give me that, John. Uh, Mr. Give it to me. <laughs> So watching Wonder Woman in this movie, I agree with the director that she didn't have much to do. But however, watching her, I was like, oh, my God, this is what the Wonder Woman I miss. Yeah. Because 1984 was a disappointment. I'm so glad I didn't see that. And, no, but here's the thing. I can't go back on what I said. For some reason, I enjoyed the movie, but it ain't good. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's disappointing. I have said that. And I want to keep saying it. That it's not a good movie. And. It was it's more it's more of a disappointing than me just like straight out hating it. But I was just like, but but there's like some kind of soft spot to me because I like the Wonder Woman character. I like Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman as she has grown on me as Wonder Woman. But in this one, I was like, God, I missed that whole warrior thing because I was like, where is that in '84? Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying if they did play it, it was very very not you know monotone and stuff like that. But I was like, man. I missed that whole warrior thing to the point. It's like, yo, man, this is it's about to go down. It's about to get rough, and uh, she's not backing out for nobody. And I, I appreciate, it. I appreciate, you know, her, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, her and her fight scene, you know, with head butt, uh, uh, Kal-El. And I was like, yeah, see, that's the one woman I miss, and that's the one woman that I, I did not know how much I missed her until I seen her. Mm-hmm. A kind of thing. So it's just like I heard people out there saying they they want Zack Snyder to do one woman three. I'm like, no, keep, keep, keep let Paige. First of all, it, it wouldn't look right, and second of all, uh, let Paige do it. Paige just had a hiccup and she messed up, but she people got to say the reason why we like one woman a lot in the first part place is because of the first one. So I'm like, let her just go back to the roots, but bring Zack Snyder on as a producer like he was in the first one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and you could do it that way, and that's how they could team up and work together on it, and you can have a you know, uh, you know, a, a better story with her. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, next character, Superman. Uh, I'll start on this. He he, he was better. <laughs> Superman was better to me. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, <laughs> there was that one. It was one scene where he came into the battlefield. 
And he's just literally like laser beaming and punching Steppenwolf to the ground. And then the team is just looking at him like, yo, you good? And I was yo, like, he's not all there though, bro. He's like, not all there. And yeah, so I was like, are they teasing this right now? Like, are they really going to start playing with that? Where he's just like, he like, yo, this, you're you're about to murder this guy. We understand we got to kill him, but yo, but it was. I had the same reaction as that guy in the background of the Batman trailer when he was beating up the uh, poor guy. Mm-hmm. I was I was that guy in the background, like, yo, all right, all right, bro, all right, bro, yo, yo, he's down. So I thought they were going to play a little bit more in his darkness. I felt like, I mean, there wasn't a lot of Superman in there, but again, is I don't feel like we got enough Superman in this trilogy, so so to speak. So I thought it was it was better to let the rest of the team shine. So I was okay with this. The Superman fight was still great with uh, Superman versus the Justice League. I thought that was great. I'm glad they edited it to the point where Lois comes on her own instead of Batman calling her up. And they had it. They just played the movie like they had it. Josh Whedon was the oh, one that yeah, put that. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but that you know, trying to make the lowest is the key force in there, right? Because I kind of uh. I hated the part where he was like, like, "Do you bleed?" I remember you said that. I was like, "Okay, we don't have to go there." <laughs> that was dumb in that movie, but all right. So again, yeah, I like Superman better. Uh, uh Mister Amy. I loved it, and I once again I, I'm a little pissed off at Warner Brothers and, and and Josh Whedon because they didn't understand the importance of the black suit. Yeah, and they wanted the they wanted the uh the red and blue suit for Superman, where Zack Snyder wanted the, the black suit because the black suit is a Kryptonian healing suit. Yeah, so uh, what, they never explained that in the movie, but I'm saying. But that's what it necessarily is, and for him to come back, he's going to need that to. Because uh, everybody was like, "Why wow, he still got it on?" I'm like, "Well, he, he need it," but uh, he's still not fully all the way there though. But they made him keep that blue on, and they had to recolor it to black for you know the Snyder cut or the way he wanted. It. I, I felt as though that that was very unfortunate because once again, that is the suits following the money and not following the vision. Yeah. And uh, the whole Superman. First of all, Superman is a complete badass. This, this is the Superman that people want. <clears throat> they don't want to admit it that they, that they want it. They want to make any excuse in the world. But he comes in there, said, "Well, here's the ass." He's just like not impressed, and just blows it, turns it to ice, breaks that jaw, and whoops his ass. And I'm like, uh, "Bro, question: How did he come yeah. back in the original? Oh, uh, the okay. same, the same way, but under different circumstances." He, okay. he he came back. He came back the same way. They took the whole thing with him and Alfred out. Yeah. Uh, it did, which which I was like, well, that was you know dumb because he had the black suit on. But he took the whole thing out with him and Alfred. He basically talks to Lois. He's like, oh, I got my mama. I got Lois back. Let me go be Superman. And then he comes. And if you recognize, he comes and becomes the Superman that all the fans wanted. And I was like, this feels out of place. Mm-hmm. He comes and becomes that 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 that's that's the problem. We just we just had a whole argument or debate earlier in the review talking about the BVS and talking about how Superman is portrayed. So they gave you the Superman that everybody says this is what Superman is supposed to be, and it fit right. He comes in there. Is this guy still bothering you? And I'm just like, oh, I hate mom's <laughs> apple pie heroes. I hate them. Cyclops, Leonardo, Superman. I they, they irked their life out of me. And, I'm, and he's sitting there just being all happy. And then, you know, uh, he, super, in Cyborg, Superman, I need your help. He's just like, all right, we only, we only got one chance at this. And I'm like, oh, God, this is this is cringy to me. And I'm like, this is the Superman y'all want. And because I'm holding the building, you know. <laughs> while oh, 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 yeah, sure, because, car. you know, because, you know, we when you when you're a Marvel director, we got to make sure we show somebody saving somebody. I'm like, my God, this is it's in the way. And this Superman, to the point, it's like, when he's this kind of Superman, when he has been Superman for a while, he's reserved. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, when you have a threat on, on the side of Steppenwolf, even though I'm like, Steppenwolf, Superman made him like a whole bitch. Both times, to be honest with you. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> both times, to be honest with you. But this one, it teased that thing like, yo, because when he does come back, and everybody here on this podcast read comics, when he does come back, 
he's not fully there, like right. in the head yet. Right. And I'm exactly. like, you got to illustrate that. But he comes back and he comes back like Christopher Reeve Superman. I'm like, God, this is corny. And to the point, like, is it colorful? Sure. But I'm just like, but 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 th- this man just comes back like to the point where there ain't nothing wrong with this guy. He just co- goes back and he just does all the corny crap that and he does. This one, I'm like, yo, they handled Steppenwolf the way they needed to handle this guy. Kill him. Now, Superman didn't do the killing blow. Wonder Woman did. That's the warrior in her. Yeah, I, I was hoping they stuck with that because it kind of yeah. uh, plays back into the first movie. She's the one that ends the wars. Is exactly that's why all that stuff. So I, I I appreciated how Superman was portrayed in this movie, and, and still him fighting the Justice League at the memorial is still one of my favorite scenes in the whole right. thing when it comes to you know a Justice League movie. Right. The only thing I missed was uh, it was one part in the original where Steppenwolf was like like flying in the air. Someone threw him, I think, and he was up in the air. And Superman just came down, punched him to the ground. And I was like, that was impactful. So I, I, <laughs> I missed that punch, but I was like, I, this was the, him looking like he's about to go dark. I was like, okay. Because seeing that shot in the trailer looked menacing. I thought that was that shot was him fighting the Justice League. But seeing that on Steppenwolf and just everyone looking at him was like, yo, he ain't good. He is not good. <laughs> I was like, okay, I like how they teased that. Um, lastly, I get, oh. Hold on. Um, he, yeah, the I director talking about Superman. I'm so sorry. I thought I got you this, <laughs> this time. Fuck the director. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck his input. <laughs> nah. Um, I I thought Superman w- w- was cool. I I like the black suit, but I know Zack Snyder didn't do it as a Kryptonian Hill in suit. I just think Black Snyder thinks the suit looks cool because Superman. He never wanted Superman. He always wanted Batman. And I think that's Why so Why don't you MBBS. ever give this man no kind of credit? <laughs> <laughs> because you know, you know what? Everything no, you said no, on here no, is no, always no, a director's no, decision. Nope. No. Let me tell you something. This is his this is his movie. This is his four hour movie. <laughs> if he wanted to say that it was a Kryptonian Hill in suit, he would have said it. Because it's his, he gave us enough slow mos. We had a slow mo of a, of of a sesame seed. You trying to tell me he can't hit Alfred? Out, oh, wearing black, Mister Mister Superman. And he's like, ah, oh, it's Kryptonian <laughs> healing suit. I'm not at a hundred percent, but I'm close. And you know, boom. Oh, Kryptonian. Oh, it hits. No, Zack Snyder was like, black suits is cool. I, that's exactly so why he's wearing think, it when he's like underneath the clothes. I think so that's again, I just think it was just one of those things where it's just like. All right, Zach. Like, I'm glad some of your ideas didn't happen. I don't know. I think that was I, implied uh, when he was it, going through this when he was going through the ship and all the. You know what? You don't to need him. to. You don't need to imply. It was a choice. If it because because he could have just said it. He said he said it any other time. Like, how do we movie. not need to imply? But you just said he got to take that out. If this I the- was someone who didn't know anything about a Kryptonian healing suit, I would have no idea why Superman is wearing a black suit. I think he's wearing a black suit because he was just dead and now he's not. So he's in mourning or something like that. Or he's like a darker Superman. He's evil Superman now. Like, I just don't understand why he would be wearing that black suit. It wasn't like he went into the ship and the ship said, you know, put on the Kryptonian healing suit and it'll get you back to 100 percent. Just say that. Say that then. Don't have us infer, and because he did infer with his four-hour superhero epic of his canceled movie, then that lets me know that he did not think it was a Kryptonian healing suit. He thought it was a cool black suit. That is really ass not to even come out with that comment. <laughs> that is really ass not to even come out with that comment. I mean, I, 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 I swear... If yeah, you're going to do it, you do it. Fact, okay, if you're going if, to do it. Do it in your four-hour movie. He so, shoved so, Martian Manhunter down our. Why throat. don't you? He he oh Man my Hunter god! Out. Stop it! Stop it! First of all, so why don't I hear any Josh Whedon hate? Oh, why I don't, destroyed because, Josh Whedon okay, when. So look, Josh Whedon gave so you the blue. You always be on the thing where it's like if you criticize one person, your defense for criticizing that person is why don't you hate this other person? If we were talking about something Josh Whedon did. I was one who was tweeting out, I wonder how better Avengers 2 would have been if Josh Wheaton wasn't on it. Because apparently Josh Wheaton makes poor choices after I saw what he did with Justice League. At the same time, this is Zack Snyder's whole ass vision. Zack Snyder's Justice League. If he wanted to tell us it was a Kryptonian healing suit, he would have told us. If you didn't read comics 
if you didn't know why he was wearing a black suit, you, you would just think guy. this dude's wearing an edgy black suit. Oh Simple my god, that. that is so reaching right now. Thinking that they thinking that the average person knows what a Kryptonian healing this suit ain't is, for the average is person. Reaching. I don't think, yeah, I don't think that like, look at this whole movie. This ain't for the average person. I, you don't give a shit if my mom or my or my wife understand this movie. It's for us that's on this podcast. You know what? And you, and you he did a bunch of stuff that he didn't have to do in the whole entire movie. We didn't need the flash scene, but he gave it to us. We didn't need Martian Manhunter, but he gave it to us. There was all these things that he wanted to do. If he wanted to say it was a Kryptonian healing suit, he would have just said it. Everybody who was talking about the Snyder Cut knew when they seen it in the trailer, when they seen the, the, the picture that leaked, they said, oh my God, Superman's in a black suit. They know what the black suit is. Now, so you, so you, you, you want to go and you want to do what Warner Bros. is doing. You want to go out here and you want to try to uh, play homage to the majority or the, the, the casual fan. That's what they did. So they gave you the blue and red happy go lucky mom's apple pie Superman, and he ain't worked and then in the again, 2017 movie. No one asked for the happy go lucky Superman. They just, people you like, just said they no, did. No, people like Superman. They didn't like Superman killing. They like the man. So it's, it's kind of like. <laughs> Have fun, but don't go too far. It's like dirty talk. You know when you're having dirty talk with your lady, and you're dirty talking, and you're dirty talking? You don't be like, yeah, you dirty, filthy, slutty whore. You be like, whoa, 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 that's too much. You went too far. It Him depends snapping on the neck, to. too far. <laughs> a little dirty talk. Oh, you was a dirty girl. You nasty. Oh, we like that. That's fun, dirty talk. That's what it's talking about. When when it's not like, and that's the problem with, with like Zack Snyder and the WB. They both swing so hard. Like WB swings the overcorrect, and Zack Snyder just like wants to do weird shit. Like at one point he wanted to have Superman's main, no Batman's main intention to be like reserved about resurrecting Superman because he had fallen in love with Lois Lane, and WB was like, "No, Zack, you can't do that." And Zack was like, "But I want to." I heard. Nothing yeah, about that. it's weird. No, 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 that's just I a weird it. thing. No, no, that. Swag, swag. That's a <laughs> that's a real thing, and it's just remember what I said about the storyboards. Like, uh huh. That's remember I said there's one thing I did not like in the storyboards. Oh wow! That, okay, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> so I'm just really saying, weird. like, that's so weird, and I I just feel like they both overswing, and it's nice when they can just meet in the middle, and you get the best of both worlds. I just think until someone proves me wrong. I just think if he wanted to say it was a Kryptonian healing suit or like indicate, have it somewhere on the screen or something. I'm not saying you have to just shout out and yell and there's a battery pack on his dude. And it's like, I'm only 95%. Cheerio. No, you, just be like, it's a Kryptonian healing suit. A simple line. That's all I'm now, asking. Now, Let me ask I you a question. Now, now I didn't read or um, watch much like animated Superman stuff or read the comics on that. So, I'm just finding out this is a Kryptonian healing suit. Thank you, I, because it's just a black now, suit. I thought he picked this because he wasn't all the way there. And then they displayed Steady. him not being all the way there. And I was like, that makes yeah. sense. That's where I took this from. That's why I'm saying they should have they should they should have made it bigger. But I like, don't, this is part of his I don't healing. think that's needed to be said if I got this certain interpretation out of it. But you did not get a Kryptonian healing suit. But it's like this. Okay, which way you do you got, want? He was angsty. Because okay, look, you you, I got two things. One, you said if they was to prove you wrong, you know, say so you wait for them to prove you wrong. I'm saying it's Kryptonian healing suit, but you know yourself, you're not going to allow them to prove you wrong. You don't want to be. He proven already wrong. had the chance to prove me wrong. This is his movie. I'm, I'm just saying, and, 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 and I'm just saying, and then now it's like, okay, so I just say he didn't know it was a Kryptonian healing suit this whole time, but he figured out what. The black suit meant to him. So, in other words, he I'm not going to insult. Black, so, yo, he said that he did, did not know the Kryptonian healing suit. He just thought it was a personal choice. I just said that. I just said not, he did not know it was a Kryptonian healing suit. I just but said he that. said it was Superman's personal choice to wear this outfit because he was not all there, which is the same thing I said earlier, which is like I thought he was wearing a black suit because he was mourning. And he just and he was just dead, which makes you think it's a personal choice versus this is a choice that's going to fix me. It's does not, that it's, choice, it's, does that choice like matter? There's a difference in mindset. I think, I think the choice does matter. I think the choice in, does matter a, a lot. Way. However, with that being said, I don't, like, I don't agree 100% with 
with you, uh, director, saying this was like, you know, he had to say this was a Kryptonian healing suit. I don't think he had to say it, but at least have it on the screen. Like they showed all these different suits. Maybe just have it somewhere where if someone wanted to like get an an an, an Easter egg or just underneath like, it, just say healing Kryptonian or healing. Or like suit. they're showing all the suits now that he like he knows he's dead. He's reborn now. Like this is a new era. Well, even I would have took I would have took that, and then just just you know what I mean. Like I just thought okay. I don't I don't I think I, certain I things that. like that should be explained because at the end of the day, like you don't want to over explain to the viewer. Because when you over explain, he was wearing you get black BVS. because it was cool. When you over explain, you get BVS. Yeah, That's the thing. Yeah, BVS was all like, "Oh, we, good thing all the coworkers are not doing overtime." I'm like, that shit ain't needed. Like, yeah, we. Again, that's that's another thing from them swinging so hard to correct something but because you everyone just said- was upset because they were I, again everyone was upset because a man is still it made it it made Superman seem like he doesn't really save people and he was just kind of recklessly like destroying towns fighting people and he told like one people to get out of their restaurant but for the most part he wasn't the Superman that was just like let me get this out of the city type of thing and so what Warner Brothers did was just made sure that you knew. Like Superman wasn't killing a bunch of people like indirectly, and again they just overcorrect. They overcorrect. Zach goes so, all the way left. They go all the way right. So which way do you want it? So it's like so which way? Which way do you, he made a mistake? Okay, fine. Zach Snyder made the mistake. If you want to call it a mistake, it Man of Steel. They fix it, and you're still not happy. So what is it? I'm not. I'm not saying I'm unhappy. I'm just saying you, people oh my are unhappy about. About about them saying like the building was empty is because they overcorrect things. I you was just, like, oh, okay. I see why they did that, but I don't, I don't care either way. I think they could have did it a different way, but it doesn't bother me. It, I didn't, I, I didn't really care too much when he was like when the whole city got wiped out. That's on some Godzilla shit. Like that's what happens when you deal with Superman. Like I just, I was, I was fine with that. My own, my main thing with the whole super thing was just him like snapping the neck. Like I just thought that was kind of wild. Just put him in the negative zone or something. So that, that, that's come, literally it. Were were you mad at Superman too, with Christopher Reed? For, for wait, which one? Superman two, like that's the weird one that like doesn't count or something. No, There's, no, like, no, that's not no, that's not the one that doesn't count because three and four don't count. I'm talking about this is what he is. Him and Zod is when it, him going against Zod. That's what Superman two is. Terrence, I don't know. I've Zod. never, I've never seen Superman two. You know he kills. Oh, I know. Zod Neville, I don't, right? I've never seen Superman too, but I know, also know at one point Superman reversed time by spinning the Earth backwards. So those the, movies are obviously untrustworthy. The, no, no, no. You know he kills Zod in the second one, right? You know he reversed time by spinning the Earth. That's backwards the first one. I've seen all the Superman movies. Unfortunately, I've seen all the Superman movies. <laughs> so and, I think and, it's and, safe and to say like some one. wild stuff that happened in the seventies can stay in the seventies. I, I do believe I do believe from world. what people's from what people's perception of Superman was, I just think him snapping the neck and like the nature of it, like the way it went down, I just kind of feel like people were just like, well, that's. So that's what's the perception? You talking about what is the perception of Superman now? Superman where do, is where do Superman is people? all of Superman is humanity's hope. He is the he is he is the best of all of us. Okay. Now that that, that it's, it's, it's a good combo answer to the majority of people who don't read comics like we do. What is the perception of Superman? Where do they get it from? He's Jesus. No, no. Where do they get it from? Seriously, the, where do they get they it? They get from? it from the TV, the cartoons, and the you books, just said the mythos. No, they, 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 casual fans don't read comics. I'm talking about the mythos is Christopher Reed. The mythos is the 1940s. The mythos is. Those uh, I don't, I don't know if people hold. Come if they on, think of man. Superman, I think because I think, right. Superman is pop generation. culture, but you just said they need to leave the seventies in the seventies. A certain generation would think of Christopher Reeves, but if you sh- if I showed if I was like, hey, little kid, when you think of Superman, what do you think of? I'm probably thinking they would be talking about like the cartoons and shit. You know, but Superman, Superman is one of the he is his symbol is one of the most iconic symbols. Um, and it's most recognizable almost anywhere. I and I, I know it's very hard to make Superman movies, and I think Man is still. I actually like Man is still. I think it's a good movie. I liked it all the way up until the end, and 
I mean, up until that point, I just was like, damn, wouldn't have been my choice. But again, if we were get to, into like what I think the fault of this movie is, I think it's a, I think that's a Zack Snyder problem. I think that Zack Snyder just likes to like push certain boundaries, and sometimes it works well, and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, okay. So Batman, uh, I know that wasn't on the list, but uh, we literally went through the whole team, and I thought we should mention Batman. Um, Batman, I feel like nothing was really intensely added. They took out a lot of the jokes that Batman had. Like, yeah, oh yeah, I'm, I'm glad we don't got stand up Batman. I was like, oh, that me had to go. That me had to like, go. Oh, yeah. um, that whole but, rooftop yeah. scene was tragic in Justice League. That's a horrible way to set the movie. It is. Oh, and I was like, yeah. Josh Wheaton needs to get oh, off my of Joe God, that was bad. Yeah. I forgot all about yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> what they smell? Fear. I, and I'm I like, forgot all about okay. that. <laughs> yeah, that I'm, was bad. Remember, the exploding paradigm is they show the three boxes, talk him about the, the the mother boxes. I'm like, uh, no. And in this way, he's like, yo, Diana, explain to me what these mother boxes are. Right. <laughs> Risk. Yo, even even the way that they did that just. It just made it just work. Like you didn't need a lot of it. It just sh- oh, where's where is she going? She's going at a gravesite. Where is it? Just shut up. She's going to a gravesite and checking out some shit. And then you were there. You were like, oh, okay, cool. She got the torch torch thing work. Oh, okay. So she's finding out the information. Oh, that's what's going on. Boom. Easy as that. Like the like the 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 choices that you make make movies better or worse. And I just feel like strange choices were made. 